南无本师释迦牟尼佛，南无本师释迦牟尼佛，南无本师释迦牟尼佛。We pay homage to our respected teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha. Okay. Right. So, picture. Hmm. Nice. What kind of combs are these? Willows, no? Uh, or or uh, what do you call that? That tree that was dying. A birch. A birch, yeah, a birch, yeah. I think it's a birch tree. Yeah. It's a snowy day. It was a snowy day. Winter. Okay. One of my favorite pictures too. Hmm. Okay, your turn. <laughs> Everybody already unmuted. So if you want to share, you can put up your hand on the right hand side with your happy face. There is a hand there, you can actually just click your hand and then there you go. Waifun? <laughs> Waifun? Yeah. It's full of and, and the um, pictures I look uh, at it, I see it is Greek. Greek, cold and silence. Mm. Um, but cold and silence. Another, another thing, yes, cold, silence, but uh, it's very pure and peaceful. Pure and peaceful. Um, I think that, um, yes, uh, I think that is uh, is not only uh, quiet, they, they, they are, uh, the pictures, uh, they have um, a meaning for me, that is, uh, they're waiting. They're waiting. Quietly waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quietly waiting. Yeah, good. Quietly waiting till, till spring comes. Then they will spring up. Good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Put up your... Huh? Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah. Okay, Jeremy. We don't see your physical hand. <laughs> I was looking for this uh, emoji hand. Okay. Sorry, I'm not seeing with the computer side, just my hand hand. That's okay, <laughs> no problem. Um, so when I look at it, uh, I see many seeds, which is what a cone is, a pine cone or a, a, a birch cone. Mm. Uh, it is a seed, and I see many seeds at different stages Yes. It's still growing, even though it's it's cold and and you've got the the stillness, but yet the seeds are still developing, and mm. some look even ready that they're ready to drop and and take root. Mm. So that, that's kind of my own thoughts. Just this week have been a lot on on seeds and and growing and pulling out the ones you don't want. So that's the, it's an apt picture, a really good picture for myself, just for my own thoughts this week, and that's. So that's how I interpret it, or see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Seeds, yes. Yeah, they are, they are seeds. I mean, in one cone, there are hundreds of seeds. Yeah, good. Okay, Isabella. <coughs> there you go. Hello, good evening. This one, everyone. Yeah, yes, good yeah, evening. When I see this picture, I see both uh, life and death because uh, the cones are so dry and then it seems it's completely dry, but it's not uh, death. 
Uh, mm. We still have teaching time maybe in a good condition if they um, uh, be live again. Yes. And also I like it has um, the picture has two um, um, what's I call the two 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 kind of wheel. One is the like um, the close up the focus one the core and yeah. also the back background. Yeah. And then I'm not sure the right side you say is the winter time. Is it like the something snowing? At yeah, it is. No, it was snowing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it yeah, was snowing. It seems like you catch the, you stop the time. You you stop the time at that moment. Freeze so the moment. Yeah. The cone in the yeah 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 yeah, and then we can see the cone, the focus one, and then the background, and then we see some snow, and then uh, we, uh, we have two different views at the same time, and then yeah. we stop the time. It's amazing. Freeze. Yeah. Freeze the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. <laughs> yeah. Pause. Put the time in pause. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Titania. Good evening. Yes. Anybody here in the Dhamma Hall? I know. <laughs> right. He's and I was just saying, there's another painting right there. Yeah. Another painting. Yeah. Oh, you, go, you go ahead to paint it. Okay, Laurie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I like the background a lot. Mm -hmm. I like that um, really fuzzy, foggy back background. <laughs> There is is so much possibilities in that background, yeah. Uh, s but s yet so much unknown, but yet so much possibilities, yeah. Okay, Susanna, yeah, unmute yourself, please. <laughs> Good evening. Evening. In there, so it's when I read the uh, the news that there's a road on there on the page. Yeah. Talk about a, a community. So there are sit there, there are bugs there, and they and they all quite I mean not not quite trying to survive in the cold weather, and and also like but I mean like the cone is very old, I mean it's dark brown, and some is lighter brown, so it's different stages of life. So we, we should be great. I mean, I would think that we should be grateful that you know, they all survive like of different ages and they all survive in this cold winter time. Yeah. So like, it, if you're telling me that life, regardless of what stage you are, we we are all surviving at the same time. It's yeah. just a matter of you know, which stage of life you are in at that time. Yeah. Right. And no matter what stage are you in and what kind of experience you have had in the past. Uh, you still need to be grateful. Good. Yeah. Okay. You think? Yeah. Just like us, are we? I would say that the bus is aware that there's a seat, a cone beside it, and that there's a lighter, a darker cone. So it's just all aware that that's no. It is the same as what the verses have said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Good. Very good. Yeah. You think? You think you had your head? Hey. Good, welcome. <laughs> hey, good. You see, she's from China. She's very afraid to speak in English. So good, well done. You think? <laughs> when when I first see the picture, yeah, uh, it reminds me of one famous uh, 
uh, sentence. Yeah. If the winter uh, comes, yeah. Can the spring be so far? Oh, oh! If the so winter comes, can it's, yeah. So it's full of hopeless, hopeless. Hope, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Steve. You're very good. Very good, everybody. Hey. <laughs> And so English is so poor, so I... No, it's a good try. I've never heard you speaking, speaking English. And you know, Laurie is, Laurie is have such a big smile. You, Laurie, you should come and say hello to her. <laughs> you know, Laurie... Oh, hello. Hello, Laurie, Laurie right here. <laughs> here, here, here. Closer, closer. Close, closer, closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. And, and, this, and this dog, too. Yeah, come on, Zoom is sick. Uh, well, you think, Laurie was you think's daughter's uh, once upon a time uh, English teacher, online English teacher, so they know each other. So I always encourage Yu Ting to speak in English. She's from China, so they hardly have any chance to speak in English. But her major in, in university is English. <laughs> so I encourage her. Now, good, one, one big step. Yeah, you should be grateful that you have an opportunity to speak in English online to so many of your Dhamma brothers and sisters. Wonderful. Yes, winter is here. Spring cannot be very far. That is very hopeful. Yes. Yeah. Good. Very good. So any more else? Any anybody else? And Hello. Hi Anne. Um I hi. Um I also agree um that I felt a sense of peace when I first saw the picture. And then um, the cone, um, I kind of honed in on the cone and it felt kind of like interesting to me and stimulating uh, to see all the compartment in there. That's yeah. what I got from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cones there. It's, yeah, it's actually a very, very complex, um, what do you say? Composition, right? This cone is actually the composition is actually very complex. It's, but it's such such a beautiful, such a beautiful cone. Cone is one of my favorite uh, thing uh, from from the plant world. Cone is my favorite thing, and rainbow is another from the nature. When I whenever I see a rainbow, I always have a big smile. <laughs> so yeah, cone. I love cones. And uh, yes, great, good, thank you, Anne. So, anybody else? <coughs> All right. Yeah. <coughs> this, um, I see a lot of possibilities in here, and I see a lot of hopes in here. And um, as, as you think said, um, when, when winter is here, spring is not very far away. And um, and tomorrow is always another hopeful day, you know. Um, so that's why this paragraph goes with, uh, uh, this picture actually goes with such a paragraph. Start the day fresh with gratitude. Start the day fresh with awareness. And start the day fresh with equanimity. So this is the passage that goes with this picture, which I think is actually very fitting to the paragraph because um, um, gratitude and awareness and equi equanimity are the three very important qualities that we really have to develop uh, when we have this human life. So do you have anything to say about this passage before I go on? Jeremy, yes. 
So Dana asked me really briefly, just the, the best definition of equanimity. Yes. So I, I thought I'd ask that so that she can get that from you as well. Okay, equanimity is a balanced mind, a balanced mind um, to the uh, present existence, present experience that you are, you're encountering. Uh, balance, that means you accept it the way it is, even though it is very unpleasant. You would not develop uh, an anger or ill will, hatred or rejection to it. If it is a very pleasant one, you wouldn't, you wouldn't sort of start to crave for more or want it to possess it because why? Because you know whatever experience that you encounter right now is going to change and it's going to disappear. And that is because of impermanence. Uh, that's the truth pertaining to the existence, whether to our own existence or whether to the existence of everything around us. Uh, whether it's anime or inanime, because we know that is the truth pertaining to the existence. And if I start to um, develop dislike or dislike, actually, right there, we are actually um, making, um, uh, uh, planting a seed for our own sufferings. Okay, Dana? Yeah, good, you. good, good. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. Okay, Irene. How was your retreat? No sound again. You have to put your earbuds on, I think. Something wrong with your, yeah, <laughs> every time. <laughs> Go and get your earbuds <laughs> every time. Very strange. Anybody else before Irene come back with her earbuds? I don't know what's wrong with that one. Oh, there you go. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, the retreat was great. Good. Um, uh, no one's in, it's not required to wear a mask, but if you're sick or coughing, then you do. They will ask you to put on a mask, um, but you need to prove that you are vaccinated, you know, you have part of the vaccine. Good. So what okay. I, okay, and great, thank you. I, I could gratitude, awareness, and economics is work together. Yes. And gratitude, to have gratitude, that means to some compassion. Yes. Be uh, compassion, and then you, when you handle your daily work, but speak with people, and then you speak softly. Yes. Yes. Um, a chorus and economics is it's just like a bird with two wings. Mm -hmm. They are tall in size and weight, so it has to be balanced. When you, especially you know when you do walk on your cultivation path or doing the meditation, the meditation, you know cultivating. Mm -hmm. So awareness bring up the mindfulness, and equanimity will help you reduce your judgment mm -hmm. on the things that you any agitation that you encounter. Mm -hmm. uh, from work. So they are very important and they all work together. Mm, good, good, yes. Equanimity and um, awareness, um, everybody says is that just like the wings of the two birds. They have to be of the same strength, same size, otherwise they'll, they'll fly lopsided. <laughs> they can fly high. And you, if you look at an eagle, um, when with with these strong wings, it can fly very very high, especially a um, a, a, a bald eagle, bald eagle, right? Wow, they are amazing, amazing creatures. Yeah, good. Anybody else? Okay, all right. Okay, so gratitude. Awareness, equanimity. Let's talk. Uh, let us talk about gratitude. Gratitude in the um, in the Oxford Dictionary it says um, uh, we are very. Um, let's see. 
um, willing, willing to to show, to give good goodness to people who have helped us. Uh, that is uh, one of the definitions from the Oxford um, uh, Dictionary. And in, 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 in our lifetime, where we live right now, everything is being given to us. Everything is being provided to us. Um, whether it's clean air, whether it's clean water, or whether it's uh, um, good fruits, good vegetables, or whether um, it's good roads, and uh, whatever, you know, uh, everything is being given, provided to us. Though we have to pay for them. <laughs> uh, but still, sometimes even though you pay for it, you may not get the best, right? So, <coughs> so we have to be grateful that we, need, we get the best. Um, or people are willing to give you the best or willing to give you as, as good as they could have given you, okay? So uh, why do we have to be, why do we have to be grateful? Why do we have to be grateful? Huh, strange. Okay. So um, in, with being grateful, there are a lot of um, meanings to this word being grateful or gratitude. The first thing is um, they said it, you, 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 you identify with or you agree with. For example, you agree with this, this, this world, this environment, this nature, um, because it has given us so, so so much good things, like good air, good water, then you identify yourself with this nature. They give you so such a good thing, you should give them such a good thing. So it's sort of like a, you, you agree with them, then they agree with you, so it's like a mutual, mutual agreement and mutual benefit. And then also is we pay back. We pay back, like, um, like a child was, was, you know, the, the mother carried the child in the womb for 10 months and look after it, uh, take care of it, feed it and, and educate and uh, care for it and love, love him or her. So when they, when, they, when they grow old, when they grow older, we want to pay back. We want to pay back the piety. We want to pay back the filial piety. So, uh, of course, our parents, well, my parents did not ask for payback, but some parents do. But even though if they don't ask, we should be paying back. Not necessarily monetary or, or, or material-wise, but um, mostly it's actually the mental payback is more important than just mo uh, monetary or material or sometimes just a a short phone call is already a great payback. And uh, so that is pay, paying back. That means that is also uh, gratitude or gratefulness. And then admiration. So being grateful is also an admiration. Uh, because why? We admire they, them being, being such a good person or doing some, such a wholesomeness or uh, uh, being so selfless, uh, with with that with that admiration, with you have you have gratitude there, because you're grateful to have learned to have known such a person that you can who you can a actually admire, who have who have such good qualities that you actually admire, okay. And then um, you cherish. Cherish is. This is something that uh, you know all of us really um, cannot live without. Is cherish, cherish what? Anything, everything, anybody, everybody. <coughs> uh, no matter whether we are um, 
very rich or whether we are very poor, or whether we are very famous or whether we are not famous or whatever, we need to cherish. Cherish uh, relationships, uh, cherish resor resources, uh, cherish others' uh, integrity and everything, you know, cherishing. When one cherish, one actually, when one is grateful, one will cherish. And when one cherishes, one will be grateful. So, and respect. So, respect is also a, actually a foundation of, of gratitude. Um, because when we do not respect, we won't be grateful whatever people do for us. Or whatever people, uh, however people help us, we won't be grateful. And, uh, and if, we don't, we, if we are not grateful, a lot of times we are not respectful. We don't respect people. So, and then integrity is, integrity is, um, is <coughs> something, some, some very good quality that one um, has to develop. And of course, uh, being grateful is an attitude of how we live our life. And integrity is how we behave in our life, right? So, so if, if between people we lack of uh, 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 gratitude or gratefulness, it will lead to a very cold or distant relationship. And if we learn to develop this integrity, we will, we will, have a, we will start to really appreciate uh, others' existence in our life. Whether it is they are helping us or whether they are, we call them so-called enemies. As we have discussed before, there is really no true enemies in our lives. Any, anybody we think that they, we regard them as our enemy because they are not doing the things according to our wishes or they are uh, punishing us or they are always picking our mistakes, picking us on our mistakes. We actually uh, sometimes identify them as our enemies. They are actually not our enemies. They are people that we should be grateful to. Because why? They are burning their energy to help us to improve. Right? And uh, I, you know, why do they need to help us? Why do they need to tell us that we are making mistakes? They don't have to. But because they, are, they care for us, that's why they tell us. So we need to actually have that kind of integrity in our, in, in, in our mind, in, in our own existence, and we appreciate that. And of course, um, uh, appreciation to, right, is, is also a basis of gratitude. And then it's a way to be in the world, is a way to be in this world, is a way to actually um, live and, and how, if we actually live in the world with uh, gratitude, with gratefulness, we won't hold grudges. There will be no animosity. Uh, because why? They, they will be dissolved by the, great, the, the gratitude, the gratefulness. So, and that is a wonderful way to live in, in this world. Of course, you will say, well, you know, if, if I live in this world with gratefulness, what about if others are not living in this world with gratefulness? What do you do? What do you do? Then they will take advantage of me, right? Nobody can take advantage of you unless they have a connection with you from the past. Nobody can, okay? So we have to look at it from that point of view. So. I said start a day uh, fresh with gratitude. Why do we need to start a day fresh with gratitude? Why? Why? Why do we have to be grateful? 
once we open up our eyes, why do we need to be grateful? Exactly. Uh, Laurie said, we have another opportunity, another day, because nothing is guaranteed. Yes. Um, I, I, when I teach my uh, seven days um, or, or five days meditation, I always say that in the morning, after the morning chanting, I always say, you know, we have to be grateful. Grateful that I open up my eyes, I can still see. I get up, I can still walk, right? And I can still open up my mouth to speak, and I can still hear. And it's a great opportunity to be able to do that. Not everybody has that opportunity to be able to wake up firstly, and wake up to be able to see, to hear, to smell, to taste, and to walk. So we should be grateful we are able to wake up in the morning. That's one thing. The second thing is, I ha whatever that I haven't finished yesterday, today, I still have today to finish it off, right? So we need to be grateful. And very important is, for all the shortcomings that I haven't corrected, I haven't improved myself, today is an opportunity for me to further progress and improve myself. And to those whom I haven't told them that I love them, I appreciate their existence in my life, today is an opportunity for me to tell them. And for those I wanted to help, but I did not help, today is another day that I can offer my help. And if I have neglected my friends, if I have neglected my family yesterday or before, today is another day. I can, you know, try to spend some time with my family, try to spend some time with my friends whom I have neglected in the past. And if I have held a lot of grudges or people have held grudge uh, with against me, today is an opportunity for me to, to, to find a way to dissolve those grudges. Right? And the most important is I'm still alive. And I can do whatever that I haven't had a chance to do. To say, to achieve, to appreciate, and to progress. So, it is so hopeful. Every morning that when we wake up, we, ne we really need to be grateful that I can wake up. Don't take it for granted. I can wake up and I have this whole day ahead of me that, that is so filled, completely filled with so many opportunities that I can, you, you can just casually pick a few opportunities and if you remember to pick, casually pick a few opportunities and use those opportunities fully I tell you, that day, at the end of the day, you sit, you lie down, and you think, you think back, you say, wow, today is a great day. Today is a good day. Today is a day that I should be grateful of. Right? So, so that's why we need to be grateful. Okay? So, gratitude. In, in, the, in the Buddha's teachings, especially in the, uh, in the Mahayana teachings, there are um, four things we needed to be grateful, uh, to be grateful of. One is grateful for the land and the earth or for the country that we are living in. 
um, because why? We rely, we rely on the land. We depend on the earth, on the water, on the mountain, on 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 the, and on the on the sun and everything to bring our daily necessities, our food, our grains, everything. So this is this is one thing that we need to be grateful to is the land and the earth. That's why it's so important to really love the land and the earth and the country, of course. And it's here, it, the it, uh, land and earth, that means the, the place that we live in, okay? And then the second thing is grateful for our parents or to our parents, because why? They gave us this human life. They brought us here into this human human world, this human existence, and especially us, right? And to have a to be able to be born as a human being is a very very rare chance. And so we we as a human being and living in such a good world, a good 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 place. I mean. Um, at least we are very safe. We don't have any wars. We don't have any disasters, right? And so we are. We should be. Uh, we should be very grateful. And uh, f for this, uh, in the Buddha's teachings, he said, when we when we are um, when we actually uh, have this uh, filial uh, piety, there are actually three. Three, um, three levels of filial piety. The first level is just to provide uh, whatever, you know, materially for, for the parents. That is the first level. And the second level is we actually uh, become a good person, a very wholesome person, a person that our parents would be so proud of and our our performance will honor our parents that is the second level of filial uh, piety and the third level of p filial piety is of course the highest level is we try to if is possible try to um, lead or direct our parents to a path of morality, to a path of um, uh, um, um, practice, and uh, that means giving them the Dhamma. That is the highest level of filial piety. And then the third uh, group of people that we need to be grateful of is all the other beings. Um, all the other beings doesn't mean the invisible of course, we have to con include them, but all uh, all beings is because we are a pack. We are pack. We are uh, living in a pack. We are pack animals, so we should be grateful for all other beings, all other beings who you know who 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 help us to make our life easier, right? Like for example, during our pandemic, we are so grateful for our first respondents, right? All those um, frontline med medical people, but what about not during the pandemic? Aren't we grateful to those people who, who, uh, who, who, who work all these, um, all these uh, land to bring us clean water, and uh, who grow our food, and those who bring the food to the stores. And those at the stores, you know, let help us to get whatever food that we have, where we want to get, even though we have to pay for them. So I tell you, money is not everything. If we if we do not have those people helping to bring those things to us, even though we have million billions, it's it's not going to help. We won't get those food. We won't get those clothes. 
So we need, we need, to, we need to understand this. So this is for all the other beings. Of course, um, uh, uh, we all, the, all, you say, are these only visible? <coughs> Are these only visible beings? No, though you need to be grateful to the invisible beings too. Invisible to our human eyes doesn't mean that they don't exist, right? Human eyes are so limited. Um, we have so much uh, limited ability to see through to the other worlds. So uh, look at the, the, diva, the divas. The divas are protecting practitioners. So we, we can't see divas, but shouldn't, shouldn't we be grateful to the, all the divas, right? So remember the uh, Ratana Sutta, that uh, we talk about the divas, right? Invisible beings. And grateful for the triple gems and the teachers. Uh, of course, why do we need to be grateful to the triple gems and, and, and all the teachers? Because they taught us to become a better person. Oh, they, they give us way to improve ourselves, to progress on a, on a, on, on a path that is, you know, uh, is going to be free of sufferings. So, of course, to us as a, as a practitioner, or as a meditator, or as a student of the Buddha, the Triple Gem are the greatest teachers to us. Right, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the, and the Sangha. And uh, the, the Buddha, of course, he is, he is the greatest teacher. And because what, with his teachings, we are able to, to walk on this path towards brightness and towards uh, ultimate freedom. Without, without his teachings, without him, and without the Sangha passing along the teachings, it's impossible. So, so we know this is actually very important. These, these four levels of, of gratitude we need to remember. Um, so this is, this is what uh, in the Mahana, Mahayana teachings is always uh, uh, teaching, always telling us to be, to, to be grateful. To, of course, we can uh, have a whole list of uh, other people or other things that we need to be grateful to. Okay, so start a day with fresh with mindfulness. We call um, uh, awareness, um, continuous awareness, sampajana is clear comprehension. So with these clear comprehensions, what do we get? What is happening to the mind? With this clear comprehension, with this uh, right kind of mindfulness, what 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 is what is happening to the mind, what, what do we know about the mind? So with this clear hum comprehension, we, we start to actually understand the mind, knowing the mind. We start knowing the mind, oh, the mind is in this kind of state, and in this state, and, and so we start to, we st start to, by knowing the mind from there, we start to understand, oh, this kind, of, this kind of situation, my mind will react in this kind of way, right? For example, when, when you experience pain uh, during your meditation or during your, your daily life, uh, you experience pain, and you say, oh, wow, there is pain. And then you start to, un you start to realize that in the mind, there is sort of some 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 anxiety or some stress. So, wow, there is some anxiety coming up, and you then you start to understand. Wow, because of this pain, my mind will start to react in this way. Then from there, you start you start to educate yourself. Is okay. My mind will start to react in this way. What is this going to where is it going to lead me? Oh, is it going to lead me down this path? This is going to be creating more sufferings. Or I can just still watch it and see if I can, you know, uh, deal with this pain in another way, uh, with, another, with a different kind of attitude. Then you start to tr actually train the mind. 
you start to train the mind. And when you, when you start to actually train the mind that way, the mind, even though no matter how, how, how wild it is, no matter how unwillingly it is, you, you'll be able to tame it little by little, you know, bit by bit. So when we start to tame this mind, when we start to tame this mind, or when we start to do all this to this mind, what do we do? What do we, what do we achieve? That is a great thing. What we achieve is we stop. We stop the sprouting. Sprouting of what? We stop all this sprouting of new emotions, new seeds, unwholesome seeds. So, uh, and then, because if we start to, to actually allow this, if we do not uh, be, we, we do not become aware, if we do not tame, if we do not train, then new seeds of, of, of reaction or, or reaction will start to, to, to come up. When we start to react in the old way, in the old habits, then we are actually planting new seeds. But with those training, with those taming, with those understanding, with those knowing, we actually stop the sprouting of any old seeds and we actually stop planting any new seeds. So that is, that is actually a, a very a positive, very hopeful way to direct our life towards. Because why? Because whatever this uh, greed or hatred or ill will or animosity or ignorance or doubt or arrogance, those are all obstacles to the ultimate attainment of freedom and free of sufferings. They are obstacles. Those are all the seeds. And if we are not careful and any one of those seeds start to sprout, that will become one more big obstacle on this path. One big piece of stone right there, one big piece of rock right there. And so with, with with a very unmindful mind, with a very untamed and untrained mind, we are actually stacking up millions and thousands, thousands of millions of rocks in, on, the, on this path. And we need to keep on what? <laughs> what, trying to hop over? And some of the rocks are very big, you cannot hop over. And you try to climb over it, it's very difficult. So. That, 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 that's why it's very important to start a day fresh with mindfulness so that we are very careful on what we are, what we plant, and what we actually water, okay? So it actually, uh, it actually arouses a wickedness, a wicked, a wakefulness, wakefulness, not a wakefulness wakefulness to our mind. So every day if we could try, if we could try to, when we wake up and we become aware, what is the th first thought to come into our mind? That is already arising. And when that thought goes away, that's passing. That's already a, a, a impermanence actually right there. So after the first thought, do you think you can keep on to observe the second thought, the third one, the fourth one? If I ask you, what was your th first thought this morning? Can you remember? Anybody? 
You remember? Okay, so you remember to fill your body. Good. So you get up. Yeah. Usually after that it's gone, right? Gone with the wind, right? Jeremy, you have something to say? Yeah, well, it's, it's not very profound, but my first thought this morning was that uh, it was already too early for the alarm clock to be going off. I, I remember it very specifically. <laughs> too early for the alarm clock to go off. Okay, great. You remember the thought yesterday, Jeremy? Uh, yesterday morning? No, I do not. Okay. I, I do not yesterday. Okay, no. all right, good. <laughs> so it's actually very... It's very, very difficult to remember, right, to bear in mind and to have that clear comprehension. And so it's really um, being wakeful, being wakeful. It's not just mentally, it's not just physically wakeful, okay, you don't doze off, but mentally wakeful is so difficult to achieve. So uh, once we, yeah, it's easier to, to, to remember the first thought. But once you get up and put your clothes on and you walk to the washroom, brush your teeth, all that thought's gone. Gone. And it's very rarely that we could actually be continuously, continuously mindful. So make full use of a day, uh, the opportunity of you know, walking um, when you're sitting, when you're standing, when you're cutting, when you are, you know, uh, lying down, try to see rem if you can remember to be mindful, to be mindful when you walk, to be mindful when you, uh, when you uh, uh, wash your hands, to be mindful when you put the, wa uh, the paper towel, towel into the waste bin. Uh, sometimes I go into a washroom and I see paper towel, paper towel sitting on the floor. I know the person wasn't very mindful when they disposed the paper towel, just, just throw it in. Yes, and they, they were not mindful. And uh, so you can see when people take off their shoes, you can see how mindful they are when they take off their shoes. One here and one there, or one here, one here. And so, see if you can be very mindful. Huh? So those are mindfulness, those are mindfulness acts. So um, when you close the door, see if you are banging the door or nobody knows that you have come in or you have gone out. That's very mindful. Mindfulness closing doors and opening doors, okay. so. We said start a day with equanimity. So that means we, we, whether we encounter a pleasant or unpleasant experience, we try not to um, have this unpleasant or unpleasant response. That means likes or dislikes to whatever that is happening right now or has just happened. Uh, of course, equanimity is really um, uh, not easy to cultivate, really very difficult to cultivate. And it's actually very difficult to, to remember a lot of times to be equanimous, especially as situations um, when there is um, heated conversations or when somebody is really getting onto your nerves and or when things are really rushing and you lose that mindfulness, you lose that equanimity so easily. And bear in mind, equanimity is not something that you can actually push yourself to develop. And it's really not suppressing, remember, uh, okay? Uh, if you are trying to push yourself uh, to to be balanced, you're actually going the other way. You're actually um, 
making yourself more anxious and more nervous and more stressful. And that is not equanimity. Uh, you can test yourself, uh, especially during meditation, when you experience uh, pain or numbness or, or ache and, 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 and uh, whatever, you know, uh, very unpleasant. And you can test yourself how equanimous you are. Uh, try not to move and, and trying to actually observe that very difficult sensation and see how, how balanced your mind is. You can test it. You can right away know how much equanimity you have. And of, of course, <coughs> excuse me, uh, equanimity uh, is developed together with mindfulness. They really have to be walking hand in hand. Because without mindfulness, there is actually very little equanimity. Because only with mindfulness, you will start to be aware of the, na of the nature of existence of whatever that you are experiencing. Without that knowledge of impermanence, it's, it's very difficult to be equanimous. And because of knowing that is, it, it has arisen and it will soon go away. And that's because that's just, that's just, that is the truth. And let me see if my mind can stay put for another moment or two. I give you some chance, give you some hope, um, you know, that this will go away, but you are not wishing it to go away, but you know that it will definitely go away. That gives you some um, con um, consoling, cons consoling, consolation, consolation, like, you know, it will go away, don't worry. I'll just, I'll just stay put and watch it for another moment and then another moment, and then another moment. Then when you're able to actually sit there for a few more moments, you start to actually, the mind start to calm down and start to actually embrace and accept that, uh, that difficult uh, experience that you're going through. At that moment when you start to accept and embrace that difficult moment, that's already, that's the, that's the beginning of equanimity. And when really you have equanimity, that, that nothing can actually bother you. Even severe pain that doesn't bother you because, because when you really have that very sharp mind of mindfulness and then that equanimity is really is working, nothing can bother you. You can, st you can still sit there solid like, like, a, like, like a statue of Buddha, really. Nothing can bother you. Nothing can move you. So, if if one if somebody is very equanimous, somebody is really very centered and very neutral, and is not swaying back and forth at all between experiences. And as I said, equanimity actually um, arises from. Uh, all develops together with mindfulness. Without awareness, without mindfulness, there is never, never the true equanimity. Okay. So, this, this is such a beautiful picture of Poland in the winter. That must be taken last year. Did you take this or did I take this? I think it's... I think it's me. <laughs> I, I, I seldom use others' pictures unless I have asked. I will ask. I think it's my picture. But anyway, equanimity is really um, let go of the differences. Let go of the differences. That means we don't judge. Oh, this is a pleasant, pleasant experience, or this is an unpleasant experience. Once you start to judge, then your mind falls into a judgmental a perspective, and it's very difficult to, to be equanimous, right, uh, to be balanced. And also, the second thing of equanimity is you will start to tolerate and embrace a lot. 
uh, you tolerate right, right doings or you to tolerate wrongdoings. And you tolerate somebody who are close to you, you tolerate somebody who are very distant, and you tolerate somebody who are behaving, or somebody who are not behaving. And you tolerate unwholesomeness, you tolerate wholesomeness. You embrace this wholesomeness, you tolerate unwholesomeness. So it's tolerate and embrace. These actually tolerate and embrace is uh, two sides to, to the same coin, isn't it? Right, so so we, we, we uh, that is that is equanimity. So in the Buddha's teachings, um, there are there are two very very wonderful uh, teachings. Um, very simple simple teachings, but it's a very deep deep meaning, deep teaching too. So I don't know whether I I actually translate it right, but uh, it says. <coughs> Metta for those who are not affiliated. Uh, oh, I, I spell it wrong. Affiliated. Oh, I spell it right. Affiliated or connected or have rapport with us. Okay. 無緣大慈. That means I don't have a connection with them, but yet I have metta for them. So, um, that is one one very very big teaching in in the Mahayana teachings. That uh, even though I don't have very good rapport with this person or with this being, yet yet I still want them to be happy. Tai Chi Metta is really um, wishing people wishing others to be happy, right? So. Metta for those who are not connected to us or who do not have rapport with us. The second thing is the second one is karuna for those as if their bodies are ours. Karuna, you know, is compassion. That means alleviating sufferings of others. So we would like to help others to alleviate from their sufferings because they are suffering as if that I'm suffering. I feel the pain, per se. You know, simple in terms is I feel the pain. And it's, it hurts me too. It hurts me as much as it hurts them. So, so this is actually, these two aspects are Really, the uh, um, very uh, uh, a person has to be really selfless in order to be able to do this, right? A selfish people cannot cannot do this, and a, a person who are very who have a lot of gratitude would remember would remember these these um, to to help these people. Even though I don't have uh, any any you know rapport with them, or I don't have very good uh, connection with them, but because I am grateful for what others have done for me, I will do this for others. And if somebody is grateful, and they know that they they will they 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 want to help others to alleviate their sufferings because they have gone through those sufferings. So you can say another word is empathy. True empathy is somebody who has that experience and they know how it hurts. So, so this is uh, metta and karuna. So there, there, um, a, a, bodh, a, bodh, a bodh, bodhidharma. He has in in the uh, he has a story. There is a story about bodhidharma. So one day, one day, um, uh, a Zen master came all the way to to the to the grave of bodhidharma. And Bodhidharma, he has this student. His student was there at the grave. And so the student said, oh, 
uh, he asked this um, uh, Zen master, what do you want to do? Do you want to pay respect to the, to the Buddha first? Or you want to pay respect to the, your ancestor's teacher first, the Bodhidharma first? So this Zen master said, I'm not going to pay respect to the Buddha, nor I'm going to pay respect to the ancestor teacher. So this <laughs> young monk heard this. He didn't feel very happy. He wasn't very happy. So he was very polite. He was very respectful in the beginning. But after he heard that, he became very annoyed and his manners was not very respectful. So he was, he, he, then he said something very, very, very harsh uh, uh, tone. He said, huh, you are not going to pay respect to the Buddha nor pay respect to ancestor teachers. What kind of grudge are you holding against them? And, uh, and the Zen master said, very calmly, the Zen master said, oh, so what did the Buddha or the ancestor uh, um, uh, teacher have given you? What have they done? What good have they done to you? For you to say such thing to me. <laughs> and so this young monk heard this and he was sort of like stopped for a little, for a moment. And then he sort of understood what this Zen master said. And he said, oh, yes. Can you teach me how I can actually um, live? I can actually self become self-dependent and self-disciplined. And this Zen master said, you know, the Buddha and all sentient beings are equal. And you treat all sentient beings the same. Whether you have, you have, uh, have uh, they have done good things to you or they have done bad things to you, you still have to treat them the same. Then that will give you a peace of mind. So the, the, the young monk said, so how can I treat these people the same? Those who, are, who, who have, you know, who, who have done good things to me or those who have done bad things to me, how could I treat them equally? And the monk said to him, he said, the ultimate path is not difficult. Only that we are always, we always fall into discrimination and choosing and judgment. Only with no likes or dislikes, love or hate, can it be clearly comprehended and understood. So he said, Zi Dou Mo Lan, Wei Yim Gan Zha, Dan Mok Zheng Oi, so he said, you will clearly understand when you do not have likes or dislikes, when you do not love or hate. You will understand, you will comprehend, you will behave in such a way. When you don't judge, when you don't discriminate, when you don't pick sides, when you don't choose, it is not difficult at all. It's so difficult to translate these poems, you know. <laughs> but you do understand what it means, right? Understand? Good. If you could get a better translation, let me know. <laughs> okay. So, so this four, this four, uh, uh, this uh, passage means the the path, the ultimate path. Where is the ultimate path? The ultimate path is in our daily lives. If we can actually use 
our own mind, a very objective mind, to actually live our life, to a very mindful mind to live our life, a very balanced mind to live our life. Our life is the Dharma, our life is the path, and everything that we do, everything that we, we, with, we do is actually is the Dharma, is our practice. Whether we are walking, whether we are drinking, whether we are you know, uh, uh, listening to Dharma talk, whether we are not listening to Dharma talk. So because we don't judge, we don't discriminate, we don't choose, we don't take side. Okay? So, so there are three types of mind. Do you like this full moon? I took this picture on full moon day, full moon night, one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I woke up, the light, the, the moonlight was so bright. I, said, I looked out, wow, I said, ooh, I need to take a picture. So I took this picture, it's beautiful, isn't it? Can see who thought that I, I took it from somebody else? <laughs> no, I took it with my cell phone. So, so there are three types of mind that we need to actually hopefully carry along every day. Which three type? A mind with gratitude. <laughs> a mind with mindfulness and a mind with equanimity. So if, if we could actually, if we could actually cultivate our mind like this, we, we, will, we will cultivate a lot of wholesomeness. If we actually lack any of this, we actually is, could be on a very danger, danger path of cultivating a lot of unwholesomeness. If we could actually have this gratitude and mindfulness and equanimity, we could easily dissolve a lot of grudge. We could easily dissolve a lot of wars. And, and we could easily be less selfish. Okay? But if we forget these three types of minds, we could easily fall into a black hole, which is full of selfishness, full of arrogance, full of anger, full of whatever, disrespect, and full of stress and tension and anxiety. So as a practitioner, as a student of the Buddha, this is what we need to cultivate, these three minds. So three types of minds, so hopefully tomorrow or hopefully today you end the day with gratitude. You end the day with awareness. You end the day with equanimity. And tomorrow you start a day with gratitude, with awareness, and with equanimity. May we all end today with gratitude and awareness and equanimity. Thank you. All right. Anything you want to say? Jeremy. I just had a quick question for you, Sifu. Mm -hmm. um, this week, uh, for about the first 10 minutes of, of my meditations, uh, I've actually, as a mind object, been using the, the Bodai tree. Uh, and then going into uh, my mind, or my mind object being my breathing again. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've found that it, it helps me develop a, a rope around my mind and, and clarity before I get to the breathing. Okay. I just want to make sure that, 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 that this is a good way to do it if it's working for myself and that it's... it's well, if it, if it works for you, it works for you. Okay, but make sure you don't you don't turn into the uh, visualization or imagination of the Bodhi tree or Bodhi leaf. Oh, okay. And why is that, Sifu? Then you will start to do visualize, uh, uh, visualization practices. Then you are creating, oh. creating, creating, 
other thoughts in your in your mind. I got I, I have you. So just think of the Bodhi tree, but not the visualization of it. Well, you can visualize uh, the Bodhi tree there, but not not dive into thinking up th further about it. You know. Okay. No, I've been I've I've been basically sitting myself at the base of it, and that's it. And okay. And just thinking of being there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. So it, it, is that a, is that a it's okay. Practice? It's okay. Anything that helps okay. you to to ground ground the mind for 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 a brief moment and then then you go back to the breath or your sensations then that's okay. Okay, that's how I've been using it. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Sifu. Yeah. No problem. Anybody else? Anyone to anybody want to share about tonight's teachings? No? You're so quiet. <laughs> you haven't digested yet. Do you like the beautiful pictures that I put up? Oh, Phong King. Yes. Yes, uh, yeah. um, I just want to share feeling yeah uh, can you talk that uh, it's smiling again and again <laughs> um for, for the last uh mind equanimity mm -hmm. i find that it is very very difficult because all the stuff about likes dislikes or um, love or hatred i find that um it's all about the i view i view yes yes me yeah, the view of, uh, but the, the most difficult thing to put down or to, to keep a distance from, not, not to say keep down. <laughs> Even to put a distance from it is very difficult. Yeah. For the first few gratitude, I can um I think that it's easier to practice. Yeah. But let's say we learn it from our parents yeah. telling us to be great for what we are given. Yeah. Uh, for, um, the, mindfulness. The, the mind. We learn it from teachers, right? Sifu, yeah. Uh, but then going into equanimity, I find that wow, <laughs> it's near to almost impossible. Uh, not not to say impossible, but uh, it's very difficult because every idea, every every thought carries the idea. The ego, yeah, yeah. My thought. Uh, yeah. My yeah. So I'm just saying, thank you. If I could, if I could go to a level of uh, near equanimity, then I think <laughs> I, I, I'm closing to the path. <laughs> okay. One, one thing to start off. Uh, one thing to start off. Um, cutting down your eye is uh, stop using eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop identifying I, you know, oh, this is me, this is mine, this is I, I, I like this, I like this, I like this, you know. Um, also, it's actually, when, when you start to see the ego playing up, uh, remind, remind yourself is, who he comes again, this is the big Mara coming. And I always like to say, is that, Mara, I see you. I see you. This I is the Mara. Mara, I see you. Then at that time, at that time, that I is already been like, seen by you. And it, it, it has a possibility, you, it has a possibility to, to sort of act up a little bit, a second later. <laughs> Not that much, you, just one second. You can delay the act up. So, you know, it could, it, could be, it could be done, possible. But you could actually build up the equanimity also uh, uh, in, in meditation too. Uh, and also, uh, you can also build up equanimity. Looking at it is, if if I get angry, 
who is being hurt first? I get hurt first. I hurt myself first. And I'm unhappy. And I'm sulky. <laughs> and I'm emotional. And, you know, so do you want to be like that? You don't. You don't want to be like that. Then, you know, see if you can sort of say, okay, I'll let go this time. Let go this time. Let go this time. Tell yourself to let go this time. Let go this time. You have to tell yourself, you know, in the beginning, you really have to tell yourself more often, you know. It's, it's, it's really, I, I know it's difficult, but you just have to try. But it is not impossible. It is possible to be equanimous, really. Maybe if I can uh, give myself some encouragement, say that, OK, at least I see you. I see the eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can say that. I see you, yeah. Yeah, you can say that, you know. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Huh? Titania? Yeah, Titania. Thank you. Well, I would like to share a little bit regarding this matter of uh, equanimity because I totally agree that it's very hard to let go of the I. But what I'm doing right now is I know I need time to um, uh, massage it. But whenever that I comes up or when Whenever I have some conflict, I try not to think from my angle. I try to switch, to flip side, and look at the other's point of view. And all of a sudden, my, the eye looks a little bit smaller mm. because I'm looking from the other view. Mm. And it, make, it helps me to, um, to attain a little bit of equanimity, but mm. not perfect. But it starts to look at it differently. Yeah. That's, um, that's how I start at this point. As I always said, a baby step, one little step at oh. a time. And hopefully I can, you know, control the ego in me. And this is very important. And thank you so much for always reminding us um, <laughs> to look at things differently and from using a yeah, more balanced mind. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. When we start to actually uh, look at more... Um, from the point of view of uh, cause and effect, from the point of view of you know we are in yeah, we are all all related in somehow uh, because of cause and effect, then you know nothing comes out of a blue moon. Nothing comes out of a blue moon, and and when you start to look at it that way, it, that 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 it, it's easier to to become a little bit more balanced. And it, it, of course, it doesn't. It does. It, it, it doesn't happen right away. It happens. You know, you, you you need to take time. You need to take time. And also, it depends on how how big that big that thing is. You know, how 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 unpleasant that that, that thing is. If this is just a little unpleasantness, it's very easy to get get over. But if it's a really big unpleasantness or very big matter. Uh, very big issue, then it, it really uh, takes a, a, a little, little longer. Okay. Yeah. Anne has her hand up. Okay, sure. Yeah. Anne or Catherine? Anne. Anne. Okay. Anne too? Okay. okay. Anne, Anne, yeah. I remember. Yes. Okay. Yes, Anne. Um, recently, um, I was um, sitting there and um, my cat did something and I, I think I was trying to meditate or something like that and um, I was feeling very peaceful and my cat did something and I, it made me very mad and then I felt bad because I thought, why am I being so mad at my cat and my cat who I love and um, I kind of went down that path of feeling bad about myself because I had that reaction and, and um, the equanimity wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so you, that was my experience. Yeah. My recent experience <laughs> with equanimity. Yeah, you beat yourself up, right? You beat yourself up being. Yeah, uh, yeah. I went down that path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you lose that equanimity. Yeah, you're mad and you accept that, oh, I met with my cat. Wow. 
Yes, I'm mad. Okay, next time I try not to be so mad. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, thank you. And Catherine, yes. Yes. And now um, when I meditate, whenever I have any wandering thoughts mm. or have any feeling like negativity, yeah. like dislike, I just sort of be aware of it and just look at it and just being as being. But I don't indulge yes. in about it. Yeah. And then gradually think on if I like this person and then after meditation I find out that um, if I dislike him, and then after after meditation, I find out that dislike is getting less. Yes. So yes. Identical. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's you're building up the equanimity. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Keep up the good work. Okay, Isabella. Thank you. Uh, hello, speaker. Uh, I have a question. May you please give us some advice on um, how to apply to nice kitchen to the reopening? Because I like, I I see a lot of people are going crazy to the <laughs> market and then to the supermarket, and everything is going so differently, like compared to last year or like I know to like last month. I know. Okay. The first thing is you look after yourself first. Very important is to look after yourself first. If you do not need to go out, don't go out. If you need to go out, choose a, a time that you think that there will be less people to go out. And then when you go out and you see people going crazy, and you, go, and you say, oh wow, they have been locked down, they have been locked up for too long. <laughs> like letting, letting a, a, a dog out of a cage, like, you know, like that. Then you see, wow. On the other hand, then you, you think about, wow, I'm grateful that now I see this. I see this in others. Why, can, why, I, why I can see this? Because for this last one and a half years, I've been meditating, I've been practicing. So my mind has come down a little bit. So I can, I, I'm not as crazy as, as some people. I really should not use the crazy, but, but you know, I think that's a, be, a very good description. So, and then the second thing is, you actually send them metta. Send them metta, may, may they be, you know, be happy and may they be more balanced. And that is a good attitude. I mean, I see, I see craziness when, when people drive, it's like, wow, they cut in and they cut out. I said, what's going on after this, uh, this opening? But I, I have warned you, many months ago, once they start to open, it's crazy. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be more crazy than before. Because why? People, people have that delusion that they have to be fast, you know, you know, catching this and having this and possessing this and going here and going there because they have been deprived for so long. And it's just like, boom, they, they wanted more, they wanted more, they wanted more. Then you start to, you, you need to pull yourself back and, and watch it and be grateful that, you know, wow, I'm not like this. I, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm not like this. The other day I went, I went, I went to the mall. No, it's not because I wanted to go to the mall. <laughs> I went to the mall because I, 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 I went to get my vaccine. And I saw, I saw people like driving and, and, and in the store, or like rushing and wow, I, I look at them and say, wow, this is, this is what a pandemic, what people react to the pandemic, how people react. And you can see without a practice and with a practice, it's so different. So, you know, be grateful that you have a practice. 
and don't 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 indulge into their craziness. Okay, don't be one of them. And send metta to them. All right? Yeah. Good. May these blessings extend to all that we with all the other living beings together will attain the Buddha way. May we wish more and more people will encounter the wise words of the Buddha, study them, understand them, practice them, and help themselves to disentangle from all the sufferings, all the miseries, all the defilements, afflictions, and be truly happy, ultimately free and peaceful. <laughs>